as you know we talk about the real real issues in the business right now the production issues which is the production stoppages by basically empowering uh, with data you can continuously uh, basically monitor those bottlenecks and empower the teams on the ground and this is like an aerospace plant in France making actuator systems this was like a french uh, ministry visit and they were showing the results that they managed to get with Perigo. And what they can see is that they managed to reduce like their logistical lead times by 50%. This video is brought to you by us, SCM Dujo. We provide awesome courses, guides, best practices for the supply chain community. Hi folks, uh, welcome to one more episode of the Supply Chain Show. As you know, we talk about the real, produ- real issues in the business right now. And today's topic is the production issues, which is the production stoppages. And as like me, you work in you know supply chain production, and having you know production stoppages is is basically like bad for efficiency, bad for your customers because you don't do on time delivery, bad for your financial results, month end sales, and all that. When I used to run SNOP, one of my biggest issue is to understand the you know when the production will stop and how to un, you know anticipate more and more so right. So to discuss this problem, I have a right person here today. I have Tarek Ben Abdullah. He's a CEO of Palico. He's a you know, they are a startup technically. They have a seed you know seed funding now. They are going through the Series A. We'll talk about it with Tarek anyway. When I see the product, I was fascinated what they're doing and how they're doing and they have a very fantastic case study. So Tarek and and his startup Palico is is a, I think one of the plausible solution to this problem and we're going to talk about the problem uh, with Tarek and also what could be the possible solutions right Tarek welcome to the show how are you thank you so much thanks for having me <laughs> good 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 so how's uh, yeah tell us about Palico where, before we jump into the problem tell us Palico where do you started how, how you come to you know come to this issue where you have basically trying to find a solution yeah thanks that's uh, a great segue so initially i have a background i have an engineering background in applied maths and uh i work mainly in software and data and one of the challenges i was exposed to was uh, how to help a major aerospace manufacturer ramp up their operations move from 30 planes a year to 50 with the same amount of resources leveraging data uh and very naively <laughs> i thought that a plant was somewhere where you showed up uh, you had machines, you had buttons, you press the buttons, you get the products out of it. But by going on the ground, what do you notice? That the reality and the of, of day-to-day operations is much, much more complex than this. The reality is that you show up at 7, you have to have done your perfect production planning. Your suppliers are not reliable at 100%. You learn 15 minutes later that some parts will come up late. You learn that some operation from the day before is not finished or you had some quality issue, the salesperson may come to you asking you if you can make some adjustments in the volumes or in the SKUs you're about to deliver. And what I was saying basically on a day-to-day basis is operational teams showing up in the morning, uh, going from doing like a lot of different managerial routines, crossing information from the different departments, just to get hours every day, just to get visibility into what are the bottlenecks. And even if, if it might, might take you hours just to figure out the bottlenecks, if you have to do like some analysis to figure out like what the solution is, we simulate some planning, uh, make some adjustments, it might take you days, and by the time you're finished, the situation has already changed. Yeah. So it may take you three days to do your planning, and your situation changes every two hours. <laughs> you end up in a situation where a lot of your operational teams are in a firefighting mode. Yeah. And it's especially the case today where uh, the world is more volatile than ever, land is more volatile than ever, products are more complex than ever, supply chains are more fragmented and, and, uh, and, and volatile than ever. So basically what data can do and how data can help is by, uh, here there are so many things to track. Uh, yeah. I'll give you like a very specific example. Uh, if you just want to know like if you have the right parts, do your production on the coming week, the right machine capacity, the right competency. You already need to check to cross information from your production planning, your build of material, yeah. your stock level, your stock transfer orders, your logistical lead times, <laughs> the machine planning. It's already like probably 20 different sources of information. Yeah. So uh, by basically empowering uh, with data, you can continuously basically monitor those bottlenecks and empower the teams on the ground to show up in the morning, have constant and continuous visibility into what will be blocked. I cannot produce tomorrow afternoon because I will be missing 
this screw or in this, in yeah. this panel, yeah. give them recommendations on how to act, how to react with the right, what is the next possible production date, how can mm -hmm. I reallocate my parts, and enable them like to collaborate with the different functions like over this common view of information to implement solutions. Uh, this has like a basically by empowering people with that level of visibility and the, the right basically intelligence to those recommendations has a big impact on first like how they experience their workday, but also on the quality of the daily tactical decisions that they make, and it helps basically increase the adherence to, to the initial planning you've done or to the initial SNLP planning that you've done. A better yeah. on those blockers and better adjusting to it. Yeah, so, so let's, I want to touch base on the, let's call it, um, the problem a bit more and less expense. So from my experience, so when we talk, when do I set up so you come up with your demand plan and, you know, do we do demand forecasting, then you come up with the demand plan, looking into your seasonality, your market demand, promotion, all that. And then you move to a second step of SNOP, which is the consensus planning, which is again looking at the supplier, supplyability, which is both in your internal manufacturing or your, you know, external to a supplier. So, so it's it's it, so the thing is we don't have many much visibility of when we have a people visibility we have a machine capacity visibility right so we can say we got x amount of machines and we will produce x amount of parts or we x amount of people who can do x amount of hours so we we can do some high level supply planning but we won't be able to we don't able to for example project or forecast that you know machine gonna stop or something gonna you know something gonna go wrong right so i want to come to this specific uh, let's go a bit more examples or case studies with you. Let's say, or say, okay, these are the specific use cases in call it anticipating the production road blockers, right? Yeah. So, and and then how Pelico is basically solving those use cases. So, so I want to be more very specific in you know from the production point of view. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So basically, to to ensure the feasibility of your production planning, you have multiple dimensions, right? Yeah. You have a part. You have your uh, you have your finite resources, your yeah. people, and if you take, if we take for example this first dimension, like do I have the parts to do it? You do your SNLP on a high level. Uh, you know uh, your capacity on a high level. At a, at a granular level, when you're an aerospace company, for example, or in, in the luxury space you make watches, for example, you have eight levels of deal of material, mm -hmm. assemblies, of assemblies with Volatile lead times, you're not reliable at 100% internally in your process. Yeah, yeah. So you're a production controller. Your yeah. job is to ensure the adherence of your planning. So every morning you would ask yourself like those, probably those three questions. What are my work orders at risk? What will block me? And what I can do to, what can I do to remediate to that? So before what we observe is that people would usually do multiple analysis, for example, for parts, try to uh, extract various information from ERP systems, do some line of balance analysis, for example, at the first level. Uh, so what people will enable them to do, to do is show up, immediately monitor your portfolio of work orders across, do I have the parts? Will they be finished on time for my customer orders? Do I have the capacity? Immediately see among your probably thousand work orders, which ones would be wrong? Uh, mm -hmm. See exactly on the, the work order that will be, uh, see exactly at granular level, uh, this is the exact part that will be missing, or this is, uh, what can I do for it? Do I have a stock transfer opportunity, like from another uh, storage location? Uh, uh, do I have a partial delivery opportunity because there is a big uh, uh, purchase order coming from my supplier? Or if I might just block rather than have a production stop, what is my next possible uh, uh, enablement date so that I can start this specific work order? And what can I do based on my objective, my on-time delivery objective? What other work order should I reschedule at the, at the, to, to avoid losing the capacity? Mm -hmm. And once I come up with this solution, I'll probably escalate this problem to uh, my supply chain person, like to implement this partial delivery, to implement, like I would tag them and they escalate the problem to them to validate my new uh, scenario uh, uh, that I just simulated to, to, uh, to, to basically put that in place operationally. And uh, what is what, what the type of feedback that we get from users by doing that is that usually people didn't wait for Pelico before trying to do those analysis, before trying to synchronize like, across all those teams. It's just that 
being able to, it's just that the world just got more volatile. <laughs> it's just that rather than, you cannot afford anymore to do this analysis on a weekly basis. Yes. You need to do it like every few hours. <laughs> yeah. Every, every day you need to, to, to have a new, uh, an up-to-date basically version of what your blockers are, be able to instantly simulate those alternative scenarios at the push of a button. And this does a, this basically has a big difference. On, on, on the customer. So the type of benefits that they get is one, uh, immediate first productivity gains, people focusing on packing solutions rather than firefighting, synchronizing. Two, obviously, like, uh, there are big performance impacts. Uh, I'll show you something. We just yeah. received, by the way. Uh, so you can share the screen, yeah. Yeah, so if I share my screen very quickly, this was like a a visit from uh, this was sent to us from one of our customers. This is like an aerospace plant here in France making actuator systems. This was like a French uh, ministry visit, and they were showing the results that they managed to get with Perigo. And what they can see is that they managed to reduce like their logistical lead times by 50% just by making better daily tactical decisions and ensuring that everyone is focused on, on, on the right, basically, uh, priorities every single hour after, after every day. Uh, so, so yeah, immediate impacts as well on the performance, that as well, other type of qualitative feedback that we get from, from the teams. Uh, this one, correct me for example, this was like a, a, a production controller which told us, hey, after I am 59 years old, I've been working in this plant for 42 years and I've been waiting for uh, a tool with this type of visual, with this type of simplicity to see the blockers all of my career. Thank you for making that happen. Uh, so it also helps emotionally people leave this kind of stress of the unknown, of last minute issues that are discovered, and feel kind of more in control of where, where the problems are and how to do things. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Very good. I wish, uh, yeah, we should have this as well. So I want to understand the, if people also use Pelico, I, I think since you said you have access to a work order, you you need to see the inventory, you said we can, you know, and your, we can check about the transfer orders, things like that. That means your your product or Pelico sits on top of the current ERP. Exactly. So uh, Pelico doesn't at all like replace uh, the the transactional systems that you have. Those are like the basis of how your uh, your your your, uh, your company functions, like your ERP or MBS, etc. Yeah. So it's just like this intelligent layer that sits on top of uh, transactional systems that leverages the data coming. From your ERP, from your time tracking yeah. system, from your maintenance tracking system, yeah. it just gathers like this operational data, yeah. uh, makes it coherent, like represents the world in a way that people understand, like parts, production modules, suppliers, clients, with 360 information over each of these business entities, and adds like this layer of intelligence to calculate: Am I covered? Uh, what is the next possible enablement date? What are my stock transfer opportunities? What is the impact on my on-time delivery by rescheduling that way? This kind of stuff. And it, so it provides this intelligent assistance on a day-to-day -day tactical basis for, for people on the ground. This is great. I think you, when the graph you showed me, you mentioned this the reduction of the total supply lead time as six, you know, by a 50 or 40 percent. This is a massive claim because let me let me give you an example, right? So when I was a manufacturing manager for, I'm one of those lucky people who have done manufacturing manager job and supply chain manager. So I can see the both both sides of the plane. So I used to always challenge the manufacturing guys, you know, why are you asking five days of total production lead time when you can actually assemble the whole thing in, in a day and they do that anyway if you release the work order on time. But when I become a manufacturing manager, I realized why they do it because it's almost the the buffer for shit happens, right? You know, it's almost they are buying time for 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 they know something gonna go wrong and some and then they have to they have to find a way to you know don't overcome it to it. But so but the thing is, even though with the best possible uh, intention, I managed to reduce the, the total let's call it work order lead time from five days to uh, three days, right? We didn't manage to, to but I couldn't reduce it because there was some always some stoppages and quality issues or whatever to do that. The point is the impact was huge, right? If you take out the two days lead time from that, you know, total manufacturing or total planning lead time, that means you're saying you're literally saving two days of inventory. And we managed to do that, right? And uh, we got a, I got a huge praise. The thing, the, the thing I'm trying to say is with the anticipating better production values and stoppages, 
the impact of, as you said on the slide, and which I 100% agree with you, is that a total reduction of lead time means total reduction in days on hand inventory, therefore, you know, bottom line savings to your cash flow, right? So, can do you have like, uh, be, uh, I know, as I enter startups and since, as entrepreneurs, we're always very optimistic about our product. But what I'm trying to basically get to this with the example is, what are your claims, right? What are you saying? What are the key KPIs your product can improve? Yeah, sure. So, the, the first one is your planning adherence. Ensuring that when you plan like to produce 100 parts, based on whether your strategy is delivering your customers on time or maximizing your sales, you have your planning. Right. And the first KPI we impact is ensuring that you have planning adherence. Okay, how, okay. So, so, sorry, Tarek, for disturbing. As for each KPI explaining, maybe you can explain your anticipated improvement using Bellico, you know? So, if you talk about planning adherence, you say you can improve planning adherence by 10% or something. So, just explain yeah, the sure. benefit. Yeah, yeah, explain this example. Yeah, it obviously uh, depends on the baseline uh, <laughs> and how good you are. But among our customers, like we've seen uh, improvement ranges between their, their um, depending on their baseline, between 10 and, and 40% right. planning a during street. And this is mainly by better anticipating those production blockers and better reacting and empowering the teams to react optimally to them. So that they yeah. don't discover like problems last minute, this kind of stuff. That's one. The second uh, obvious area of improvement is uh, team productivity. Uh, like improving, empowering teams not to focus on non-value added tasks, gathering information, meeting, synchronization, but immediately focusing on like uh, on solutions, not spending like their uh, 30 minute daily meeting just on getting the status of where things are, but immediately focusing on solutions. So here we talk about between 30 and 100 percent productivity improvement for the teams. Where we're talking about production controllers, uh, so, so, so ordering of supply chain ordering officers, customer support teams. Yeah. And three, uh, we know this as well, uh, like a, a good reduction directly on what we call like firefighting curves. So PD transfers, extra shift, all those extra costs that you get by discovering your problems late in the mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And those as well like depend on the on, on your current context and what's your level of like CG transfers, urgent uh, expedite orders, this kind of thing. So this has a direct impact because obviously you get you get to anticipate more and react last minute less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's great. That's great. No, I think I think you are definitely on to something here. Uh, and uh, by the way, at this point, I want to do a disclaimer that this is not a sponsored post, right? This is not, you know, Tariq is not paying me anything. I just found a solution, uh, you know, I got to know about Pelico from some reference. Uh, and then I just look into the website and I think being a, a supply chain production guy, I think more people should know about it, right? So as always, we at SCM Dujo, we're trying to, you know, bring solutions to people. That's what we want to do. So I think people should know what, what Pelico guys are doing. So what is what what is the future look like for Pelico? Where are you heading with this? Yeah, so um, company is, uh, the, the company is now like uh, two and a half years old. So over the first kind of few years, we worked with uh, large manufacturers uh, in the aerospace industry, in the luxury space, in the medical devices space, like to improve the product, build out those case studies, and do as well like our first expansion. Uh, for example, uh, with one of our earliest customers, the, the largest like aerospace manufacturer, we started working with like one plant. We're now deployed in four business units across four countries, etc. Uh, so this enabled us like to have like a kind of a solution that works, that is proven, that is loved by, by its users. And right now we just uh, closed uh, a Series A round. We raised uh, uh, 18 million euros to do three things. One, uh, keep making Perico, the Perico product, more intelligent with even more algorithms that support even more type of decisions that are being taken on a day-to-day -day basis. Two, expand our customer success team to be able to support our customers who have a global footprint globally, uh, in Germany, more in Germany, uh, in the UK and in the US. And three, uh, obviously, get out our operations like to accelerate uh, our growth market and our sales and marketing, basically engines to onboard more. All right, that's that sounds pretty good. 18 million euros, a lot of money. So congratulations, well done for achieving this. I should have asked you for money, but anyway, I'm just joking. Right. Uh, anyway, with that said, Th Tariq, so how are people gonna find you and Pelico? How, how can they reach you? What are like through your website? What's what's gonna happen? 
Yeah, sure. So uh, first, if there are any watchers who want to reach out directly, uh, my email address is Derek at Perico.io. So Derek, uh, G-A-R-R-K at Perico.io. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, we read every single comment we get through our website uh, and definitely happy to, happy to connect, uh, whether for potential collaboration opportunities or uh, to deep dive like on um, other supply chain professionals to deep dive on, on those problems that we're passionate about. That's great, Tarek. Thank you for joining the show. I think it's I think you've got a fascinating product. And unfortunately, I'm not a planner anymore, so I'm never going to use your product. But uh, I hope I can I can with this video, some planners can uh, can I can actually access out. And I think there's definitely a need for this uh, kind of solution. I think you're definitely on a problem which industry faces day, day, day in, day out. Uh, and I, I think your solution is complementary to the existing system, which is which is great, right? Because I haven't come across any ERP system who is intelligent enough to do that, right? But the irony is all the production planners, you know, all the work orders, all your purchase orders sits in ERP. So that's the unfortunate part. And actually, that's why I've written a blog called Why ERP Sucks, right? If you can literally Google Why ERP Sucks, you'll find my blog. And this is one of the, my biggest, uh, let's call it, complaints or grievances that uh, why the ERP system are not intelligent enough to do what you do. But anyway, you just that's why startups are there, right? The startups are there to to come up with the innovation and that's what you've done. You put that's what you've done. So thank you Tarek. Thank you for joining. Hopefully hopefully you do you you do well and uh, I'm looking forward for you know more collaboration, hopefully referring some customers if, if they come in after this video. Right? Any any last thought, any last comments? Well uh First, thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for having like a blog uh, that is gathering people in the supply chain community. <laughs> this was uh, much needed and definitely happy to uh, connect further and maybe do some more deep dives on more specific topics. That's great. Thank you, folks. Thank you for joining the show. Uh, keep, as we say, keep it simple, keep it real. Subscribe to the channel and yeah, go and do follow Tariq on LinkedIn and Paliko. They're doing some awesome job. Cheers. Good day. Bye. Mm -hmm.